Section 3.2 is all about the substitution method. So we will be doing a quick little recap of the substitution method here for those of you who are present and just chilling out and relaxing. Now, if we look at an integral and it appears like the derivative, I always tell my students if it appears like the derivative or piece of the derivative is inside like one of the factors and inside the integrand, then that's usually a really nice uh, appropriate substitution to use for u. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to notice that x to the 6 boop, 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 happens to be the derivative of x to the 7 minus 11. So we are going to set u equal to x to the 7 minus 11. And we're going to go ahead and find the derivative of u with respect to the variable x. That should be 7x to the power of 6. And what we would like to do is we would like to shimmy some stuff around so that we can uh, effectively remove some of the factors that we're seeing in the integrand. Now, I'm going to consider x to the 6 as a factor. I'm going to consider x to the 7 minus 11 to the power of 50 as a factor. And I'm also going to kind of consider that dx, that differential, as a factor as well. And I'm going to do a little like a naughty thing here. And I'm going to take this fraction, this... Uh, uh, fraction of differentials, and I'm going to break it up. So I'm going to say, what if du was equivalent to 7x to the 6 dx? Well, if that was the case, then I guess what I could do is I could replace the x to the 6 and the dx with du over 7. So that's the strategy that I'm going to use to try to get through this particular substitution. We're going to take the derivative with respect to x. We're going to break apart those differentials and kind of treat them um, like, like, like we would with a regular fraction, kind of like numbers. Um, I'm kind of viewing them maybe as like little infinitesimal differences between things. Uh, and then doing that gives us a relationship between differentials. So our relationship here is that if I take dx and I multiply by x to the 6, that's really like taking du and dividing by 7. And let's see, I'm going to take my original integral, and I'm going to rearrange some stuff. So I'm going to put the x, I'm going to put this factor first, and then I'm going to put the x to the 6 dx last, because I know that I can take these two factors, and I can replace these two factors with du over 7. Now the other thing that we can do is we can take our x to the 7 minus 11, and we know that we can replace that with the variable u. So all in all, we should be able to rewrite our derivative as, or sorry, our integral as u to the power of 50 times du over 7. And this is great because now I can take that 1 7 outside of my integrand, and I can focus on using the backwards power rule to find the antiderivative of u to the 50. So effectively here, we would what like to kind of keep our 1 7. We are going to go ahead, add there. one, divide by our new power. That. And we will go ahead and add our constant of integration because we do not have bounds here uh, for this. So on the high side, welcome in. Hopefully you're doing well. Happy Monday to you. And then to clean this up, the last thing we want to do is we would like to get u back in. So we would like to rewrite this as, hmm, what's 7 times 51? We can just multiply that out, right? 7 by 51 is 300. So we'll get 357 in the denominator, 357. And then our u is x to the 7 minus 11. But that's now going to be to the power of 51. And then we'll go ahead and we will add our constant of integration here out at the tail end. And that's roughly how the substitution method works. We try to identify something that's helpful to choose as u. And once we identify that thing, we're going to try to break Come apart our differentials. Hi, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> 
the equation 3b x plus 5 point to <laughs> indeed jeff plays show these your things work out. or you're just noise in my zeta universe so yeah, we'll try to break apart those differentials to try to find a relationship between them and then try to utilize that relationship to effectively change the integrand into something that's a little bit easier for us to manage with the usual rules that we would have. That's kind of the idea. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Let's take everything underneath the square root and then let's take the derivative of u with respect to x. That's going to be 4x cubed. We're going to go ahead and break apart these differentials. So we will have du. We can think about du as 4 times x cubed times dx. And what do we actually have up here? We have a dx and we have an x cubed. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And now I have all of the items that I need in order to do my substitution. So let's go ahead and just see what that substitution will bring us. Maybe I'll also write this as to the power of one half, because I suspect we'll have to use the power rule, the backwards power rule here. All right, so all of this becomes u, all of this becomes du over four. And so now our integrand becomes u to the one half, du over four. And so now our goal is just to take the antiderivative of u to the one half, which we know is u to the three halves over three halves, and then we'll go ahead and we'll add our constant of integration here at the end. We have selected u as 11 plus x to the four, so let's put that back in, 11 plus x to the four. And then what do we get in the denominator here for our constant? So we're gonna get two as it's over six, four times 1.5, six right okay question number three it looks like the derivative of the denominator is inside the numerator or at least part of it so why don't we take u equal to x to the six plus two let's take the derivative with respect to x and we should get six x to the five if we go ahead and break apart our differentials we see that du over six is equivalent to x to the five times dx so this should be all that we need in order to get our integration set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna replace all of this here with du over six, and then all of this down here can be replaced with u. So we should get integral one over u, and then the x to the five dx becomes du over six. Now this one's nice, one over u, du, that's the natural logarithm. So we're gonna get one sixth times the natural logarithm of absolute value u. And then we can go ahead and put our function u back in. It's x to the six plus two. So this should be the antiderivative that we are looking for, x to the six plus two. x to the six plus two is always positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the absolute values here. If you were to keep the absolute values, it doesn't really matter. Um, either way, we should be good to go for this particular question. What in the world is this? Are we taking a logarithm here? Like should we take ln 9x? Like if we take u as ln 9x, then du dx is one over 9x times Oh, it's really just one over x. Well, that's fun. So remember that this extra nine comes out, so this is the inside function, right? So this extra nine comes out because of the chain rule. So this means that du is really just one over x dx. Okay, we might have to do a little bit of rearranging so that I can see what's happening. So let's see, let's uh, put, let's move that six outside. It's kind of bugging me a little bit. So I need to get a one over x and I need to get a dx at the end. And then if I remove the one over x and I remove the dx, I'm left over with the ln nine x bit. 
So now I know that all of this becomes du and all of this should become actually one over u in this particular case. Cool, okay, so we get six times integral one over u du. And we know that's just gonna be the natural logarithm of absolute u. Oh, that's weird. We get like a logarithm of a logarithm. So six logarithm absolute logarithm nine X. That's super weird. But I guess that's what it is. Yeah, I guess so. I guess the one over X comes out because of the chain rule. Yeah, okay, I get, I can get behind that. That's a bit weird, but. Okay, this thing inside the sign looks really ugly. Let's take U equal to E to the three X. And taking the derivative with respect to x is going to give us e to the 3x times 3. That extra 3 comes out because of the chain rule, which means that du can be represented as 3e to the 3x times dx. And I actually do have those pieces identically right there. So that's kind of nice. That means that our integral should become sine of u. And then those other two pieces that I've highlighted actually just become du, right? They get replaced with du. And let's see, we do know the antiderivative of sine, that's negative cosine. And that should be a u, not an x. So we are looking for negative cosine of e to the 3x plus c. That should do the trick too unruly for us. So here, let's go ahead and take the denominator, which is x squared plus 4x plus 5. And this is a very classic thing to do. Like either we could do that or we could try to break apart this fraction a little bit. But I think that this is probably the easiest. Let's go du by dx is equal to 2x plus 4. Ah, okay. And check this out. So du is equal to 2x plus 4 dx. But du is really 2 times x plus 2 dx. This is a sneaky one. I like this. So I have these two pieces. I just need to kind of adjust what I was what I got with the du to kind of make it work. So I can take x plus 2 dx and I can replace that with du over 2. That's going to be my game plan. So let's see. x plus 2 dx, like we said, becomes Here we go. Let's see the solution of your advanced algorithm come true. du over 2. And then Looks like we'll get one over you. Oh no, the fish slap. Oh damn. Oh god, oh god. Oh, god. Let's integrate to get lawn of u. <laughs> Gosh. And then we're gonna put our u back in. So we're gonna have logarithm x squared plus 4x plus 5 over 2 with our constant of integration. There we go. Sensation is popping in to give us some songs to listen to. That's exciting. Evaluate the indefinite integral. Let's take u is equal to x to the 7 so that du dx is 7x to the 6. I see x to the 6 there, so let's do a little swap. We'll go du over 7 is equal to x to the 6 dx. Now, we're going to rewrite our integral as ex7 times x6 dx. This is our du over 7. And this becomes e to the u. We'll go ahead and we'll factor out our 1 7th. And actually, we know the in integral of e to the u is itself. So we're going to get e to the u plus c. So we're going to get 1 7th e x to the 7 plus C, and there we go, we are done 3.2. It looks like our Python script is done as well.